Hey, hey, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Straight Up Show podcast, Music Monday. This is a brand new segment, and today uh, is very special. And I'm, I'm not saying that any other Music Monday is not special, but today we have an artist who is very unique, uh, so unique that I had to have her on our show because she does more than just music. She is an all-around Renaissance woman. I actually met her on Clubhouse, hey. and and she has graciously uh, took the invitation to come on our show. So, uh, without further ado, help me welcome the one and only Callie Brooks. Hi, Calvin. I'm so glad we met on Clubhouse. Thank you for having me. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for coming on the show. Like I said, you are a phenomenal. And just when that tidbit of hearing her. You can already tell why I have her on our shows because she has one of the most unique voices that I've heard, not only in media, during all my years in media, but also who can who can learn to be, as I call it, chameleic. You have a chameleic voice to where you blend into anything that you sound. So that's why I have her on the show. So once again, thank you for coming on our show today. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. This is actually um, my first podcast interview. Wow. You know, thank you. Well, I am glad I'm honored to be your first interview. So hopefully, and and trust me, ladies and gentlemen, this is not her first interview because she's going to have plenty, plenty of more to come because this girl is definitely going places. So Callie, let's just get jump right into it. So who is Callie Brooks? Tell us about you. Callie Brooks. I am from Compton, California. I grew up there till I was 13. And now I live in the Hollywood Hills. I have been acting since I was eight. I've been writing music since I was 13. And I just recently got into voiceovers. Right, And that's how we met is like, we were actually in a voiceover group uh, on, and some of y'all know that I come from a TV and radio background. So I'm trying to jump onto the voiceover stage and lo and behold, here's this person that just stood out from the crowd and blew everybody away. And here's Callie Brooks. So you're, <laughs> you're in California. I know that you said you do some acting. What kind of acting have you you've done? I've done a lot of stuff. Um, when I was little, I was in a bunch of commercials. The first commercial I did was a Disneyland commercial, and that's how I got in the Screen Actors Guild. And um, since then, I've done uh, Wendy's commercial, AT&T, uh, Axe Body Spray. I've done um, co-stars. I was in How I Met Your Mother, NCIS. And just recently, I had some large guest star roles in uh, 911 on Fox and Lucifer on Netflix. That was in 2019. And I haven't done so much acting because of 2020, um, but that gave me the opportunity to focus on my music. Yeah, and like I said, just to see that you can do acting and music, to me, that's phenomenal in itself because some people just dip their toe in music and kind of do okay but you put your whole foot in and you've been doing great. And I got a chance to listen to her music outside the interview. And I was just driving through my car, bumping it. I'm like, wow, this girl is definitely universal. And I think that's the big key about music is that you have to be universal. So we're going to talk more with Callie Brooks, kind of dig in, go deep dive and see who is she really and what kind of music does she do? So be sure you stay tuned on the other side of the break with more of Callie Brooks on the Music Monday here in Straight Up Show Podcast. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. It's like these hoes got shoes up on their lips, the way they keep running their mouth. Yeah. Can't keep my name out their mouth. Yeah. What is this even about? Whoa. Since I saw that picture just posted, why did you wear it out? Mm. Bitch, I don't move with emotions. Haven't you figured it out? Yeah. Baby, I ain't gonna leave. Yeah. I'ma be here for a sec. Yeah. Bitch, I don't want your respect. Uh. Blood, I went off and said. Uh. These bitches be dirty and desperate. Yeah, I got money, but niggas move funny, so I just love people to weapon. Yep. And I'm forever, 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 forever gonna rep for the section. Yeah, I'm forever, 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 forever gonna rep for the section. Yeah, I told y'all niggas I was a good investment. I showed y'all niggas I was a good investment. Y'all yeah, better learn your lesson. Bitch, I pop off. I'm a wife, you get fucked, you get dropped off. Your pussy stink and it's burning just like hot sauce. Tired of the same old boring clothes? Want to support your favorite podcast but don't know how? Well, you're in luck. The Straight Up Show podcast store is finally here. In our Teespring shop, you can find all the merch that tells the world you're keeping it straight up. From t-shirts to masks 
to even leggings, our store has you covered. Just visit straightupshowpodcast.com and click that merchandise button. That's S-T-R, the number eight, upshowpodcast.com. And welcome back to the Straight Up Show Podcast, Music Monday, with our special guest, the phenomenal Callie Brooks, all the way from Compton, California. Well, just in California now, but originally from Hollywood Hills. Yeah, there you go. Represent yourself. But <laughs> if you if you cannot hear her voice right now, uh, she is a unique voice. And and Callie, just to thank you once again for coming on our show. But to talk about your voice, it's very unique. And so, like I told you before, that my my niece, she's seven years old. And she gets made fun of a lot because people think that she's pretending to have a baby voice. She has that Michelle A voice that I like to call it. People, if you don't know who Michelle A is, do your history, I guess. But, you know, mm-hmm. she has that baby voice. When did you know that your voice was very unique and what's been some struggles or some positivity that you have with your voice? Um, it wasn't until high school when everyone else's voices was starting to develop and my voice was pretty much staying the same. It's when I started to get teased a lot for it. And it was always the same recycled joke, like, have you been sucking on helium? And every time somebody says it, they think they're so clever and they're the first person to say it. And I'm like, (laughs) you're not as unique as you think you are. Um, But it was something that really bothered me. I couldn't talk to anyone without them calling attention to it. And that's, it's still that way this day. But um, when I was younger, it was something that I really struggled with. And I actually was up for a lead in a movie role. And the director didn't end up casting me because he said that my voice was too distracting and the audience would be distracting. Um, And he told me that I would never make it with this voice and that um, I should fix that. So after that, I spent a year with a vocal coach, vocal coach, learning to use a another lower register that I have. So now I can um, access this area of my voice easily. And it's good to have this in my wheelhouse, but I'm not ashamed of my voice anymore. Like my voice is what makes me stand out. And when I rap, like that's what makes me sound different than all the other girls, especially because a lot of girls, they try to sound like dudes when they're rapping. And I don't, like I'm a girly girl when I rap. And, And now that I do voiceovers, I recently got signed with Buckwald. And I just booked my first animation for Cartoon Network. It's going to be on Adult Swim. It's called Teenage Euthanasia, and it should be coming out this spring. I I just am in voice and I'm embracing my voice, and I feel lucky to have this voice now. And like when I was on Zoom with Cartoon Network, they were just in awe of my voice, and they're like the register, and and that I can do all these different things with it. So I just feel really lucky to have it. But when I was younger, um, it was something that kind of plagued me. And that kudos to you for landing that gig in Cartoon Network and Adult Swim. Uh, you know, y'all make sure y'all go support her and let me be on the lookout. What's the name of the show again? What's the name of it again? Teenage Euthanasia. Teenage Euthanasia. Make sure y'all go support that when it comes out. And we'll make sure we tag her and make sure y'all go actually support the girl because the girl does have range. And when I say range, I, I told y'all, I listen to her music and just to hear her go from singing to rapping, it's kind of like, I mean, honestly, I can't tell you who you're like because you're so different. Uh, how did you get into the music aspect of using your very unique voice? How did you jump into music? Well, my dad is a saxophone player. His name is Mickey Bridges. You can actually look him up on his Spotify and Instagram. Um, and he was always in the studios when I was younger. So I was in the studios with him. And um, I just started writing from being in the studio environment and just needing a way to be creative because I'm not on set all the time. I actually still haven't booked my lead series regular yet. I'm still working on that. So I've done a lot of commercials and it would be like booking a guest star here and there. Um, And I just found music was a way that I could stay productive and creative and still feel fulfilled within that time of not booking acting jobs. And it was something that I did for fun at first. But then I just started to get better and better and better at it to the point where people were like, this could be on the radio. But it took a lot of practice. Like my early music was not good. Um, And I've just recently started to tap into who I am as a music artist. And I just met your engineer not so long ago. And I was like, I was like, wait a minute, y'all two are putting that together. I'm telling you, these two, 
their music is, is dope. And like I said, the, the, I listened to your stuff in the radio last night on my car, and I was like, man, I'm gonna bump this up a little bit. This guy, whoever's doing this, is really unique. Can I say hi, Will. <laughs> this All is right. Will Hex. He's my engineer. He helps me write. He records all of my voiceovers. He records all my music, and he raps as well. All right, Will, introduce yourself right quick. Hey, what's up, man? My name's Will. Um, man, just been rocking with this chick ever since I heard her voice in the studio. Like my my producer mind was like, man, I got to get, got to get this girl on wax. Got to get this girl on wax. So, ever since then, I've just been encouraging her to use that voice, and she writes bars like a, like a grown man. So <laughs> yeah, I, I see. Like, okay, so just why I have you right? But what make what in your eyes? What makes Callie Brooks so unique, and what makes you just flock to her to do music with her? I mean, really, like, it's it's her voice and her vocal tone. You can hear how high it is, but it's, like, it's in a register that's not annoying. It's, like, in a smooth place, which, um, so it's, like, the Ellie Golding sound. That's what everyone was going for all 2018, all that, like, and they, you know, female and artists, like, they reach for that that voice, but she has it naturally. Um, so it's that mixed in with just her personality and kind of just, like, how tough and, um, not not masculine, but how she can hang with the guys, you know. So with combined with her voice, combined with like the toughness, it just kind of adds like a shock factor that I don't hear in any female artist. Yeah, and I'm glad he said that because that's kind of what I took out of your music is that this girl is tough, and to have him on the track with you and y'all just work together, I'm like the way y'all made that work, and just to him mm -hmm. be your engineer, that's exciting. And like I said. You know you are unique, and thank you, Will, for saying those things uh, about your about Cali yeah. at all. You know, uh, make sure y'all go check the music out here. I know we have the links to it, but just to go back to what he said is that you know you're different from any other female artist. Um, so I want to know what is, can you explain your style? Your rapping or your music? Are you more like a singer rapper, or what's your style of music? How can people actually just say your style is what? I just recently, someone just recently asked me that and I was like, trap pop. I feel like that's what I make, like trap pop. Um, I have all these trap songs, I'm rapping, talking about trapping, cause that's like a huge part of my life. And you could take from that, whatever you take from that, whatever yep. you think that means. <laughs> and, um, and I just recently started singing. My friend, Brandon, Brandon Paddock, he wrote for Selena Gomez. He wrote my song, Cards. And he's the one that encouraged me to sing and helped me find my uh, vocal register and like capability to be able to do that because I didn't know I could sing. And um, now I'm trying to combine the two. So my new music that I'm going to be releasing, it's going to be me rapping. Well, it's going to be me singing. And then I'll be rapping like an 8, 12 bar verse for the breakdown, like bridge kind of. I'm trying to find a way to combine it all and make it all make sense in a different way. Yeah, and you said Cards, which is like probably one of my favorite songs I've heard in a yeah. long time. And I was like, that's definitely one of those like, hey, this can be a top charted song because that song is it's yeah. tight, it's, it's lit, like seriously. Who would you say is some of your musical influences? Well, my influences would have to be um, Deant Word was one of my early influences. Um, Yolandi, she has a really high voice. And when I heard her, I was like, okay, well, if she's got a fan base, then people are probably going to want to listen to me rap too. Um, but I would say that I'm like a combination of, I listen to Grimes, and then I'm like, Left Eye. And then I'm like Madonna. And I'm like Lauren Hill. I feel like if you combined all these people and they made a baby, it would be me. Like these are my influences, these strong women with these special voices and these uh, powerful messages. Yeah, and one thing that you and I talked about previously is that, you know, shockingly, we had an artist that we like together. And Sway Lee! Sway Lee. <laughs> and when I found that out, I was like, wait, did you just say Sway Lee? Like, no way, this girl just said Sway Lee. He is currently my favorite artist. Whenever I'm like stuck trying to write, I just put on some of Sway songs. I know all of his lyrics. I've been listening to him since early Ray Shermer. I knew that, that he was gonna break off and do his thing. I feel like he's the artist of our time right now. I feel like he's still underrated, but I feel like he's the Michael Jackson of our generation. Like you said, he was he's the hook king and he really is. Um, and he responds to my DMs, so. I mean, who wouldn't? I mean, you know, 
But no, like the the, the the reason why I say that, we said that it was Sway Lee, but then like going back to listen to your music, I, I hear a lot of like, wow, this girl, even if you don't even like her music, the hooks that she's on, it stands out. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, golly, like this girl, like uh, I think it was Rude, I think. And then uh, what was another one? Yep. And I was just like, this girl has a killer hook. And I'm like, mm-hmm. it's crazy that she said, hey, Lee, because like Sway Lee, your voice is so unique. Mm-hmm. And with Sway Lee, for those who don't know, he's part of Ray Shremmer. Uh, I'm not for sure are they together or not, but um, the, the, her voice kind of resonates with that. It's like, you know, it stands out. It just blends in with music and it's different. You know what I mean? And some mm-hmm. people, a lot of y'all, if y'all sleeping on Sway Lee, don't sleep on her because like she kind of has that 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 Sway Lee feel. I love it. And I okay. said before is that, you know, Sway Lee, he wrote for Beyonce, that formation song. That mm-hmm. was his song, but he gave it to Beyonce, which he won a Grammy for. So just right. give me all some music knowledge about uh, Sway Lee. So uh, it, it's been amazing to hear your music. And like, so when you write your music, who are you writing about? What's your message? Like, you know, you said you want to be like Lauren Hill. Uh, what's some of your message in your music? I feel like when I'm writing, it's usually about whatever I'm going through in the moment. Like it's very, uh, it's very like a present thing for me. Um, and it'll either be about getting my heart broken because I feel like I'm always going through that, like failed relationships. It's just me and boys just don't work out. So I'm always writing about that. Um, writing about, you know, trying to turn out straight girls because I like girls too, but <laughs> I'm just always trying to convince some girl <laughs> that doesn't like girls to be with me. Um, I'm talking about, you know, trapping and how I came from nothing and now I live in the Hollywood Hills and uh, gosh, I'm talking about getting loaded because I'm always lit when I'm in the studio and it's just very like, what's in my face and what I'm going through in the moment. What are, um, what are some struggles that you've had uh, doing music or even, even, even in voiceover? I know you said that people denied you of uh, opportunity because your voice would be distracting, but what's some obstacles you have to face doing music or creating music? I think one of the biggest struggles is it being a uh, man's world. So I'm always dealing, whenever I go to the studio, there's always some other male rapper in there and I'm trying to like compete for studio time and uh, people don't really take you seriously until you're somebody. People don't really want to get behind you until you already have 50, 500,000 followers or you, you know, you've already, you're already signed. So I feel like just having people take me seriously. I mean, people will want to work with me for a little bit, but if it's not bubbling and popping off as quickly as they think it's going to, then they they kind of just throw me away. Um, I feel like that's something that I've experienced over and over and over again, even with agents. Like, you'll be booking for a little bit, but then, you know, a year goes by and you didn't book anything, so they drop you. Um, and I just have to pick myself up again and start all over, but not really starting over because I have all the songs and I have all these things that I got to create and now I have to go on to the next thing. But that's the main reason why I have a studio set up in my house now. Um, and I have my uh, Newman uh, TLM 102 mic and I've got my Apollo Twin Duo and I record in Logic. So now I don't have to wait for anybody to be like, yeah, you can come to the studio. Like I have my, my producer is actually here. His name is Swerk. He's here and we're gonna work after this. But now I just have everybody come to me and it's all about me instead of me going to the studio and just sitting and hoping, waiting that I get my opportunity. Cause I feel like that's what it is with acting. Like I'm always just waiting for the opportunity to do it, but I can't do anything about that. But I can k- take control of my music. Wow. And that's what I like about you, even just talking to you these past couple of weeks, is that I see the resiliency in you and you don't take, you know, shit from nobody. No. And I, I like it. And, you know, we talked about, you know, more personal stuff outside the show, but just to hear that story and how you've overcame it and like just your perseverance. I mean, you're from Compton anyway, but still like, you know, you know how it is to, like, to be a fighter and like not just get what you want. So I like that about you. And I'll say this to you. It's like, you know, keep the grind up. 
because you don't want a microwave dinner. You want a full fledged cooked meal. So I mean, yeah. a, a microwave dinner takes about what maybe five, maybe two minutes to cook, right? Yeah. But if you if you work at it, you take out the ingredients, you cut up everything, you put it in the pot, you let it boil, you let it cook. Forty five minutes later to an hour, you have a full cooked meal. So it's kind of like you want to keep building and grinding because when they when they when you make it to the top, and I say this very 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 heavily, when you make it to the top, they will come back and start kissing your ass because, like I said. My girl is on Adult Swim now. You know that's not even that's not even her stopping point. She's gonna go far, and she's gonna go far on this episode because we have more of Callie Brooks on the other side of the break. Make sure you stay tuned. It's the Music Monday on the Straight Up Show podcast. Stay tuned. to be able to speak in a way that is straight up, to be honest and to speak your truth. Raw, uncut, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's blunt, you know, straight to the point, this is what it is. It's just a place to be open and honest. And that's what I appreciate most about it. And it provides a place for community members to come together and just be straight up with each other about things that are going on in the world because it affects all of us. Uh, unfiltered raw with all the cursing that calvin does straight up is just being real telling it telling it like it is you know um being you being solid being who you are no matter what it is no matter what situation you're faced with right this is who you are it really it really speaks to me saying it is what it is and it ain't what it is straight up all right so we're back with the one and only callie brooks and i say one and only because i doubt this girl can be duplicated by any other artist in this world because this girl is very different. And I'm not just saying it because I'm trying to like kiss up to her. I'm being serious because when I do this show, it's not your typical artist. It's artists that just stand out from the rest. And I welcome any artist to bring their stuff to me, but this, this phenomenal artist is a Renaissance woman and she can do it all, acting, singing, rapping. But I think what stands out for her is that she didn't take no uh, for an answer I think you took no as next opportunity and mm-hmm. you, you know you know next opportunity because it's like you know you, you didn't you had your own studio now and you're doing your own thing so you know you're very organic is that is that correct to say yes very much and you said that uh you write you write your own music and tell us that struggle just like just doing that coming up um well it, it was just hard uh learning to i mean it was hard even learning to how to ride the beat like nobody really taught me anything i but that's not true my friend third my best friend from when i was 13 he raps and to me he's the best rapper unknown rapper alive he's amazing and he's the one that inspired me to rap so he helped me figure out like how to rhyme things and how to catch the beat. And I mean, but it was just difficult. It was difficult learning how to do it in the studio and learning how to do it in front of people. And it it, it wasn't easy. It's not, acting came naturally to me. Rapping didn't. Rapping was something that I wanted to do and I worked really, 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 really hard at it. Um, but now when I step up to the mic, it's nothing because I'm so seasoned, you know? I put in my, what is it? They say you have to do 10,000 hours, is that what it is? 100,000 hours or something? I feel like I've put in that time. Um, so now when the beat comes on, I pretty much know what I wanna talk about right away. Like that, those, it's a key word that comes to me. 
like, um, I just made a song called Trust Issues because I dealt with some dude and I was like, oh no, I can't trust you. I can't fuck with you. So trust issues. And then um, and then I sent him some drunk texts and I was so I was like, okay, I'm gonna make a song called Drunk Text. <laughs> um, and I'll just come up with a key keyword and I'll build the hook off of that. And then the verses come. And sometimes I'll record line by line into the mic, like as a verse comes to me, I'll record like that. Or sometimes I'll just write the whole verse and I'll record the whole, whole verse in the mic. But now the process is really easy and it happens quickly. But before it would take me months to finish a song. But now I can finish a song in the night. So basically when you're doing producing music and you're creating music, you're beat first, lyrics second, right? Yes. And I like how you said, because a lot of things that you tell me when I ask you a question, I'm looking for a specific answer and you do it very well because one thing that, that makes you stand out is that you know how to ride a beat. And your song Rude, I was like, this girl is killing this beat because if there was a, a, a different pat, beat pattern mm -hmm. and you were able to write to it and you, you was like, man, this girl can ride a beat. So just to hear you say that, I'm like, dang, man, she just answered the, you know, like, wow. That's why we, we're, we're here, we're here, you know what I mean? <laughs> And Good. I, I mean, I'm hoping that I'm answering the questions. I feel like I'm giving you a lot of what you're not asking. No, me. no, like, no, trust me. <laughs> no, trust me. I'll definitely uh, tell you if I'm looking for an answer. Uh, but no, you've, you've, you've went above and beyond already and just answered what I asked. Um, so, so are there any kind of albums coming out or some singles? Like, you know, what's in the future for Callie Brooks? Well, I have two albums now ready to go. And if I was signed, then maybe I would be focusing now on dropping some albums. But everyone that I talk to, it just doesn't really make sense for me to release all my music at once. I need to just stick with dropping singles and focusing on one song at a time, music video, artwork, and just building the whole life around this one song. And maybe I'll do that once a month this year. Um, and then maybe I'll be able to drop an album after that next year. But right now I'm working on my new single, Fire. Um, the beat is made by my producer, Swerk, uh, engineered by my boy, Headache. He's very talented. And my roommate, Will Hecht, who raps, he helped me write that. And um, we're about to work on that next. And I have to get artwork done, and we're going to shoot a music video. And I think I'm going to drop it mid-February. Maybe it'll be a Valentine's Day release. And maybe you can come on a show and tell us about it. Or we'll definitely <laughs> tag you in it, because this girl is phenomenal. I keep saying that because I mean it. And I think that with everything that I say on this show is that it's not just the music. You can have great music, but if you don't have a great presentation, that that makes that that really can kill or you know or make a song come alive. And just even seeing your work outside of here, to see your presentation and your music videos and how like you just captivate all of music. And I was at Vita Loca. I was like, man, this is like okay, I get that. And like. I'm from the South, so the whole Cali swag, I've never experienced it. But just seeing you do all your work, I feel like I, I can see that Cali swag and see all of it. And But you're, that's why I think it's very creative that you just make that one song, like, explode. You know what I mean? And then keep going because that way you're going to get brand new fans and you're going to get brand new people to listen to you. And that's very smart. Uh, so with that being said, uh, and I asked you this before, how has COVID-19 impacted your music or any of your work? COVID-19, uh, because of COVID-19, this has been the best year musically of my life. It forced me to be inside to figure out how am I going to release my songs myself through TuneCore? How can I get in touch with these uh, Spotify playlisters? How do I get them to put my music on their playlist? And I figured all of that out on my own. And I've been waiting for a manager and for a label to do all these things with for me. And I had all these songs ready to go. And because of 2019, I actually sat down and I focused and I figured it out on my own. And I released five songs last year and I have almost a million streams on Spotify. When the year before I had maybe 500 streams. Man, look at that. See, people will say that 2020 was a bad year. And like I said, me and you both said that uh, yeah. it's, it was, it was probably <laughs> the best year ever, you know, yeah, for us. It was the best year of my life. And it's so crazy to say that, but it really was. Like, I got locked in with my voiceover agent. 
because there were so many voiceover auditions because that industry didn't stop. So I got uh, callbacks for Netflix. I got a callback with, for, with Nickelodeon and I got to do a Zoom meeting with all of Nickelodeon and they got to watch me do my callback. And then after that, I booked Cartoon Network. There, man, this is just, you gotta give the girl her flowers because this girl is, I said, <laughs> people are slowly recognizing who Callie Brooks is. And sure enough, after you listen to this podcast, you would definitely know who she is and you better follow her music. But yes. let me ask you this. So it's 2021 and, you know, 2020 was great. You were able to put all this music out. You're going to do music, you know, each month, step by step. Mm -hmm. uh, should things, and I know you're in California, things are closed down. So, I mean, pretty sure you can't go out and do much. But should you have to, uh are we going to see any live performances or any kind of club venues that uh, Cali Brooks will be in in 2021? I don't know. I'm probably going to have to travel out to you to do that because everything's closed here. Yeah, and you know, I'm in Texas, so y'all can just come out and do whatever. Okay, uh, I'm coming to Texas. I'm going to have to come to Texas, Atlanta, Miami. I heard everything is still open there, but nothing is happening here in Cali. Have you like been like, you know, doing like at home practices at all? Like just kind of like just get a feel for like live entertainment or? Um, yeah, I mean, whenever I'm, I'm in my room <laughs> and my music is playing, I pick up whatever's available and I act like I'm rapping to the audience. Um, and that's just something that I love to do. It's not even like I need to do this. I need to be ready to perform. I just like am always ready to perform. And I ask you that because like you have a natural stage presence and whether it be, you know, whether it be music or voiceover, like just, I couldn't only imagine when I interviewed for the NFL network, I, I was scared because I was like, like, like it was virtual. Mm -hmm. So I was like, uh, and I'm trying to do my whole radio voice and inter, uh, reporter voice. And I'm scared, you know, the way you see me now, I was not like that in front of those people. So I can only imagine how you impress those in NFL, uh, I'm sorry, with the Nickelodeon and uh, in a Cartoon Network and Adult Swim. But uh, I ask you this because, you know, looking, if y'all follow her on social media, not only is she talented, but if she's one of the funniest people I have ever met because your TikToks and your, your Instagrams, like it's to me it's straight up to the point like that's who she is like everything she's telling you right now that's the resemblance of her social media following and it, it's impressive so i definitely encourage y'all to follow her because she is going to be a mega star uh in this industry whether it be music or acting but i think that there's no stopping you thank you yes I want to combine it all. I mean, even when I do start to perform, I just see myself like in between songs, like telling jokes. I don't really know how it's going to go, but I just kind of want to turn it into like a, a rap live performance sing stand up show. Like I want to make people laugh in between the songs and say outrageous, outrageous shit that so, nobody can expect. So your album's going to have skits in it. I know it. I know it. Yeah, I want to, I want to, I have some things ready to go. Whenever I get to put together my album, I want to have like some skits in, in there too. Yeah. And when she puts her album together, we got to blow it up. So, yes. um, so I want to ask you this question. I ask everybody that comes on our show. Who is Callie Brooks and why should people listen to your music or even, even follow you? Like, why should people listen to your music? Callie Brooks. Well, you called me a chameleon. And I feel like that's what I am. I mean, I'm a Gemini. So I'm just so many different people all wrapped up into one. It's hard to say who I am because sometimes I don't even know. Like every day is different. I wake up sad, I'm happy. I'm a hustler. Sometimes I don't want to do anything, you know? And it's just like, people are like, well, you got to pick one. What, are, what are you, acting or music? I'm not picking anything. I want to do it all. I'm a writer too. I just finished writing a script. It's called Electric Pool Boy. And it's this funny, funny, dark comedy that I'm going to star in one day. Um, gosh, I mean, who am I? <laughs> I'm everybody. I like it. I like <laughs> it. And so if, if I'm this person who's green, you know, green, 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 why should I listen to your music? Um, you should listen to my music. Gosh, that's a hard question, Calvin. You should listen to my music because it's good, because it's honest. 
you know, I'm, a lot of these people have other people writing for them and the person who's writing, it's their life that they're talking about. And the artist is trying to articulate and trying to regurgitate some, somebody else's lyrics. Like, this, this is my life. This is what I'm going through. And it's real. I mean, my life is lit. It's crazy. Every day, like, I never know what is going to happen. And I talk about it in my songs. Like, my songs are sad and they're going to make you feel that that way. And then, then if you want to get turned up, if you want to feel like a bad bitch, I have songs for that too. Like, it's just like a large spectrum and my songs are sexy. Like, I've got some songs that make you want to fuck. Like, it's just like all over the place. So I have a little bit of everything. Hey, I need no more. You, you got me convinced already. Like, I don't need any more. I mean, that's it is. And I like, I want to touch back to what you said. Like, I don't want to just do anything. And I really feel like this world makes you pick something. Like, no, yes. no, like you, you, you have one life to live. Yes. Why not? You, not to be a jack of all trades. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess you, you don't want to be, uh, you know, good at everything, but a master at nothing. I understand that. But maybe you could be a master at four or five different things. Life is long. If you decide it is like, I don't live by the life is short. My life is long. I feel like I've already lived an entire lifetime and a little bit of life that I've already lived. So I've got four more lifetimes waiting ahead of me and I'm not going to pick. I act, I make music, I write, and now I do voiceovers and I work on all of these things every day and I'm just going to get better and better and better. And I'm like this, if Eddie Murphy can do it, if anybody else can do it, like you can't say, right. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, we still love them. We still love you. So it's like, man, this girl is going to go places and it's one of these things that where you can just look at her and I even hear her voice and you can just tell that she's superstar all over your face. So I got that from you from the from the jump. And trust me, there are plenty of people. Uh, I was telling you, we live, was in the chat room with uh, the girl that did uh, the voice from my uh, Pokemon, the Ash Ketchum lady from my Pokemon. Mm -hmm. And this is like, you see her and I don't really see that superstar, but we know who she is. But with yeah. you, it's just like, bam, it's in your face. And then you hear your voice and it's like, wow, this girl is already a star before she even knows it. So, I mean, I know you know it, but I want to know, do you know how phenomenal you are? Sometimes. No, 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 no. Do you know how phenomenal you are? <laughs> Sometimes I know. Sometimes yeah. I don't know. The, the life of an artist is hard and I get depressed. I get sad, but I never give up. That's the thing. Like, especially when I'm sad, then that's when I'm like, okay, let me go down in the studio and write about how I'm feeling. And then I'll make a, an amazing song out of it. So I use my emotions to create. But no, I, I don't feel I don't feel amazing all the time. Sometimes I feel on top of the world. And sometimes I don't. But I, I always use how I'm feeling to create and I turn it into something and then that feels good for sure. And thank you. You just passed the test because that was one of those questions I was looking for. One of those answers I was looking for. You did it. Like you came out, you were being straight up with me. So I like that, that you just said that because that's what I was trying to fish out of you. So thank you so much. Um, before we go, how can people reach you and just learn to fall in love with you like we all have? How can they reach you on social media or, or any of your platforms? Promote yourself, please. You can find me uh, on Instagram, Spotify, YouTube, TikTok, my SoundCloud, it's all the same. My name, Kelly Brooks, K-A-L-L-E-B-R-O-O-K-E-S. It's the same everywhere. Just Google it. It'll pop up. She said, Google it. Google me, bitch. Google her name. <laughs> Google me. Can like, I cuss on here? <laughs> you can. Yeah, you can. Okay. It's, it's, it's straight up. So, I mean, you can cut. Yeah. Be yourself. That's all we like it. So, but no. <laughs> Uh, that is Callie Brooks. Thank you once again so much for coming on the Straight Up Show podcast, Music Monday. Uh, it's been a great ride and great talking to you. Thank you, Calvin. Thank you so much. And before you leave, you're going to give us a little something, something, right? Yes, I'm going to give you my new single. It's a little sneak peek, Fire. All right, there you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, let me introduce to you Callie Brooks. Light on me, yeah, hope that you do.